No introduction necessary, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is. with me for many years back, and they were hard years, and some were glorious years, but oh, I go through all the bad times again for what you just did for me now. I've ever heard for anybody since the last time I was with you. Remember when Mike Nichols and I were in San Francisco? San Francisco. We sat through five and a half hours of Betty Davis film but they class. didn't have to pay all this money. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a person left and not a person. Well. No intermission. Five and a half hours. It is. Um, it's um, much you've seen tonight. Sometimes I see on the on, on television. And it's really as if it were... At this age, and another person. It's uh, it's hard to believe I did all that. You want to know? <laughs> and it's hard to believe I'm still alive, having done it all. <laughs> Truthfully. You know, there were so many other clips that I wish we could have shown. I said you were very more. kind to me. I could pick out some clips. You'd have an empty house in about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Betty, we could do it. We could do it all over again five no, times. But, oh, there's so many. There's so many that uh, I'm Newman, terribly glad. Mark boxes. My first film, Bad Sister. Thank you for never showing. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I I was particularly sorry we couldn't show a clip from The Old Maid. That was such a love. A man named Lawrence Quirk has written a, a very big thing about it, and he claims that it's your most moving perform. I agree with him really? that it's your most moving performance. Well, it was a lovely play. It was well, a beautiful play. There are, uh, we, we wanted to show it tonight, but there were some problems of, about rights. And it was... Yes. Well, I think I, you did a beautiful job, and I know how hard you worked on that. Really. Thank you, Betty. He did, really. <laughs> he did. Beautiful job. Yes. I am, I'm really most grateful for, for showing part of Cage's affair. That was probably one of the hardest roles for, for me to play. It was, it was such a real departure. Uh, I was scared to death to try and be a Bronx woman, and I was very proud of that performance. I really was. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know, people don't normally think of you in comedy, but uh, in All About Eve, you were brilliantly funny. Ah, but I had June to it writing those <laughs> lines. Well, oh, it was, that is a rip. I thank God for it. It's probably kept me alive professionally ever since. <laughs> and, and I was a replacement, you know. I was never cast in that in the beginning. And uh, uh, Miss Colbert was going to play it, and she hurt her back very badly, and they had to be in a theater in San Francisco. And I have thanked her all my life. <laughs> we and thank I'm, her too. Listen, thanks, Claudette. And, and I'll never... Uh, I'll take one and I'll never forget when I had my first interview with Mr. Mankiewicz, because I had to get ready to do this in about a week's time. I'd have gotten ready in one hour's time if I'd had to... And I said, he said, I'll tell you what Margo is like. Margo. <laughs> do the two. I do. Do the two. I'm Mr. Afraid. Mankiewicz said, Margo is a woman who treats a mink coat like a poncho. And I thought that was a beautiful description. You know, I, I also loved your uh, kind of Lynn Fontani sort of role in It's Love I'm After. That's a picture that nobody ever sees or talks about. I was about. never very fond of that picture. Oh, I, I really? thought you were so funny and so sharp and so... I, did, I didn't think that was a very good film. I'm glad you liked it. I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think many people did either. I think well, you're kind of in the minority. All right, I liked it. <laughs> you didn't like it, did you? <laughs> oh, you liked it. <laughs> Well, it probably would look divine to me today. It was that so many years ago. <laughs> you know, it's awfully hard when you see... We didn't tonight, but if when you see pictures like Bad Sister and Way Back Home, that little kind of drab girl, who was the one that really decided that you had guts? Was it Ruth Chatterton or George Arliss? Or who gave well, you those I owe, I, I owe my entire uh, career at Warner Brothers to George Arliss. Really? Because, uh, yes, definitely. Because, of course, when you played with, with, uh, on a lot in those days, uh, made a film, uh, they took an, up an option on your services. And, of course, I'd just been fired after a year's work at Universal. And Mr. Arliss gave me a chance to play, and I stayed there 18 years. So I owe him. I really owe him my Warner contract. Thank you, George Arliss. And a few other people after that. But he, he was the man that... It was kind of the first time anybody had ever photographed me well or cared about me and... It's a it's a big mystery world when you go out there at first. You know what to do, and you know from the theater looks are not uh, as much as they are in 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 films. And you just have to realize there are certain things you must do to look as well as you can on the screen. Sometimes it's pretty hard to look as well as you can, you see. <laughs> unless you look awfully well to start with. <laughs> There was an actress uh, named Peg Enwhistle who's mostly famous for committing suicide off the Hollywood Hills side. Oh, and a most beautiful young actress, and I saw her play The Wild Duck in the Jewett, at the Jewett Theater in Boston when I was 16. And when we left the theater, I said to my mother, I want to be an actress, because she was very like me in, in looks, too, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, poor girl, I might add, but we did look alike. And... Uh, and I said, one day I will play the Wild Duck. And I, I did, three years later, play the oh, Wild Duck. Great. Yeah, which is one of my favorite parts. I had that. heard that story. I never knew if it was true. Absolutely. She's the most yeah. beautiful young actress. She had a great career ahead of her. We saw a couple of clips from Virginia Woolf tonight, or one clip. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> well, you know, I always thank Edward Albee for putting in what a dump. Because as you saw when I did it, I just said, what a dump. I didn't do anything with it at all, but he, brilliant man he was. It's the only thing about Beyond the Forest that anybody ever heard of. <laughs> 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 That's true. You know, Elizabeth Taylor was great, but an awful lot of people felt that you should have played that part. I know that there was talk of I could you have... Under... Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there are many, many things you're heartbroken about. And in the recent years, I have to admit, I, I, that was a heartbreak to me. Yeah. No question about it. Well, there was also Scarlett O'Hara, and you really didn't need that because Jezebel was all that much better. 
Well, it, it wasn't, no, it, it, it just was that we did Jezebel ahead of it, and uh, Mr. Selzick was a little annoyed with Mr. Warner, I might add. I said he was. But uh, still, Scholar of the Harrow was the great, great part. And actually, uh, there was a deal on between Mr. Selznick and um, uh, Warner for Errol and I to do it. And in all honesty, charming, beautiful, and heavenly in he was, he would have been the worst Rhett Butler that ever walked here. <laughs> he just wasn't right for it. And uh, if Mr. Flynn was sitting here right now, he would be the one to agree. So I decided against it, yes. Yeah. Is it true that uh, Mr. Flynn uh, caused the title of Elizabeth the Queen to be changed to... be changed to Elizabeth. <laughs> Is it true that uh, it was Mr. Flynn's uh, reason that Elizabeth the Queen was changed to Elizabeth in Essex? Alfred Lund didn't care. Oh, oh. Uh, no, I don't think that was true because Warner Brothers entitled Elizabeth the Queen the Knight and the Lady. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, I, I dare say our British cousins would have fainted if they'd called the Queen a lady in the first place. <laughs> and, of course, the insinuation was quite obvious, the pun on knight and the lady. It was as if it were just a hot, hot romance, you know. Uh, I have to admit, with a little struggle and a little ferocity, I got that title changed. Uh, <laughs> and I was perfectly happy to have it called Elizabeth and Essex. Mr. Flynn was a very big star at that time, and... Uh, it was right. a very, very good title for it. Good. We mentioned uh, Henry Fonda. He called from the coast today, incidentally, and told me to give you his love. Yes. And you go way back to yes. apprenticeship yeah. days with him, don't yeah. you? Oh, yes. Well, I go way back to the Cape Playhouse. Yeah. Because when I was ushering in the little Cape Playhouse, and he was he was um, one of the company on the stage. Yes. Mm -hmm. He fell madly in love with him, and he never looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, he was so beautiful. Yes. As a matter of fact, it's incredible the resemblance between Jane and her father uh, when he was her age. Unbelievable resemblance, really. He was the most beautiful guy and a nice guy. Yes. You know, Pauline Kael, when she was uh, uh, giving Jane Fonda some accolades, she said she could very possibly be the Betty Davis of the 70s. Well, I hope she's better. <laughs> That's, that's Although she played, <laughs> she played a part. Uh, they shoot horses, don't they? Yeah. And that book was written by a gorgeous man at least 20-some years before. And I peddled that under my arm and begged Warner to let me make it. You know, but anyway, somebody finally did make it, and she was make it, and she was marvelous. She was just great in it. You've always been uh, a, a great helper of young actresses. I know I used to read about Jane Bryan. I remember you were one of the first people I ever talked to about Hope Lang. Mm -hmm. uh, you see any any young actresses now that uh, really oh, are exciting? Oh, of course, there are so many. It takes a lot of years, you know, to, to uh, for, for anybody, even with talent, to become an established person with the public, because the public makes stars. Oh, there are many today. There are many today. There, there, there are never a hundred in, in any decade. You know, that really yeah. live on. Well, it just doesn't seem to me that today there are the personalities that there were. I mean, you were at the apex, Miss Myrtle Loy, who's out there, the well, other we're ladies. we a little past the apex. Well, <laughs> but I mean, in your day, there were so many, so many great people. Well, you can't in, think of in the now. long run, there did seem to be more. There were more women stars in, in, in at that time. Mm -hmm. But, and then, of course... Theater and film, theater, film, same thing, really, uh, reflect the time. And so after the uh, Second World War, uh, all the scripts were for men because they were about war and the present problems and the racial problems and all the things, and they were men's scripts. But I always said that uh, we had had about a good 12 years of running it, and they always were sure, the men, you know, that the back of their... Next, the haircuts were very, very good. They used to kid about it because they said half the time it's all you ever saw of the leading men. <laughs> so they, they earned their day. Yeah. Now, gradually, I think you'll a day come back with more war women's scripts. I, I really do think so. Well, I've got to hope so. Yeah. 
You played with just about every man at Warner's except Joey Brown, didn't you? <laughs> uh, well, I really didn't. Uh, you know, I, I, I was very sad that Jimmy Cagney and I never made a real film together. We made the cactus thing, you know, yeah. the fanny, that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, and I never made a real, uh, you know, co-starring thing with Bogey. I know, you did five pictures, but, but he was just... Uh, yes, he was testified, of course. But we never made a film together, which we always wanted to do. So, in in a way, I didn't. No, oh, you never had a chance with people like Clark Gable and Cary Grant and Gary Cooper. No, I never, never ever did. Boyer was a, a thrilling man to work with, Leslie Howard. Of course, not exactly a... Full-time star, but Claude Rains, I was fortunate to work with. <laughs> yes, yeah. you show very good taste. He was the most beautiful man. Uh, let, let's see. Uh, Mr. Paul Muni. Uh, I was very fortunate to work with Mr. Muni, um, but way back in my career, when I was very young, I worked with him. I would like to have done another one with him. And uh, you see, in that day, uh, hard it is to believe. Uh, one person could carry a film. So they, they didn't uh, waste us together. You see, they let each of us make money for them. You see, <laughs> yes. and, and times have, have changed definitely that way now. You've never really stopped working. I mean, I know there's, you've just uh, done a film in Rome that we haven't <coughs> seen yet. Excuse me. You've done uh, a picture with Michael Redgrave what, uh, in England. What, what's happened to that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I have no idea. <laughs> but, you know, I was, I was glad. I, I saw it, actually. It, you know, I'm pretty critical. It wasn't too bad. It was ever a great film. But it, it was marvelous to finally work with Sir Michael because uh, he was always one of my idols, definitely. So I don't know, that's, uh, I suppose it'll turn up on television someday about three in the morning or something, you know. <laughs> They'll sneak it in. I was on the MGM lot a couple of weeks ago, and there was a great big banner. Yes. Says, Welcome Betty and Jimmy. I never yeah. saw anything like that at the studio. Neither before. had Jimmy or I ever, uh, ever seen it. We started work at Metro, Jimmy Stewart and I, on the same day, about three or four weeks ago. And he was just as flabbergasted as, as I was. You know, and he was making a television movie, and I was making about my eighth pilot. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you just pray one of them will work. So uh, when I left, I had a banner made which said, "I had a ball, MGM TV." Please tell NBC to pick up our option. So I left that as my goodbye. <laughs> I remember one of the most exciting evenings I ever spent in the theater, and it was when you were doing The World of Carl Sandburg. Well, that was a privilege. Yeah. It is always a privilege to be able to say good words, really good words. And um, that, that was also my first experience in One Night Stand. I'd never traveled all over this country, a different town, every night. I found it very stimulating and um, very rewarding, and I enjoyed it. Just like it was a pleasure to say every word in all about you. Good word, let me tell you. Every word was good. That's right. Well, uh, uh, how, how did you feel about doing Broadway shows like Two's Company and Night of the Iguana? Well, as I said at the time, if you could have gotten any employment in California, you would not have come back and done the theater. <laughs> and at that time, I was offered no employment in California at all. And so I decided it was time I uh, maybe tried the theater again. It is not my favorite. I, I, the motion picture medium is my, my favorite medium for acting. I have to admit that. You don't think you'd be tempted to go into the theater now? I, I wish. I honestly wish that I liked it more. It would be really the thing for me to do today. There's no question about it. Would be. I, could, I could play many parts in the theater today that I could not play on the screen. I, I totally regret that I have this feeling of, of not wanting to. I regret it, too. Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel about today's movie scene? I don't mean Deep Throat and even Last Tango in Paris, but... Uh, I haven't seen them. <laughs> well, 
but there... I don't think anybody's going to miss Last Tango. Do you think so? <laughs> no. Is it unbelievable? Oh, it's great. It's a great picture. Is it a great picture? I, I love it. I, I think it's brilliant. Oh, picture. wonderful. But uh, what I want to... <laughs> United Artists uh, owes us something, I think, at this point. Well, um, I have heard from other people that really want oh, a kind film. Brando is fantastic. Well, he's a fantastic actor. Yeah. But most pictures today, even G-rated pictures, have sex and violence and nudity that you wouldn't think of a few years ago. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I, I think, you see, I think the public greatly uh, is responsible for what we make. And uh, as long as the public will go in droves and see naked people and, and that kind of thing... Uh, we're going to make them. We are in business, aren't we? Yes. We are. <laughs> I mean, true. the motion pictures are a business. We're not just doing it for love and sending anything. We don't care if we make any money or not. So, uh, as long as the public goes, I think they will be made. Uh, as far as sex is concerned, it certainly is not a dirty word. It's a very big part of our lives. And if, if it's done, if it's done with taste, uh, we were at a great disadvantage when, when all those years I w worked so much. No, censor-wise, 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 we could not, you know, you didn't, couldn't ever have a double bed, God forbid, if you didn't have twin beds, it was the end, you know, it was so dirty. <laughs> so we had to be kind of, sometimes dirtier being dishonest, than if we had played a scene legitimately, it would have been right to have been naked in a bed together. I think it just is a matter of the taste of the performers and the director. But if you just haul it in, you know, for no reason, it's kind of boring. I think that's what it is. Oh, it's yeah. good. So. Uh, various people say they were responsible for giving the Academy Award the nickname Oscar. And I always heard that you did it. Well, I'd sort of give I did do it. <laughs> <laughs> but for, for some reason, the Academy has always uh, felt very possessive about this that name being this. Well, I, I guess with all the movies the way they are today, I can tell why. Uh, my first husband's middle name, he always just said, oh, Harmon O. Nelson Jr. And uh, for some reason, I never was curious about his name, but he also never wanted me to know that it was Oscar. And the rear view of the Oscar looked just like him. <laughs> So I named it Oscar. <laughs> anyway, that's that's what I remember. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I think I did. I like the best. I like that story. <laughs> uh, British judge once called you a very naughty young lady. He but did indeed. You did a great deal for actors and actresses. No, did... I didn't. No, I didn't win that case. Olivia won that case in America here. Yeah. Well, you got. Olivia you got, got, a got the seven-year limitation that no contract could go beyond seven years, which is really what I was fighting in England, that there would be a termination date. Mm -hmm. instead of, Because a contract in the old days could go on for 50 years. You know, really, because every time you went on suspension, they added to it. Mm -hmm. So the years could mount up. But it was totally out of there, really. Yeah, but you were the first one who really rebelled against the... Well, I also was for... rebelling. I wanted good directors and I wanted good scripts. And I knew if, if these didn't come my way... Um, I was at a standstill, and I could never sort of have the career I dreamed of. Mm -hmm. and, and that was one thing, even though I lost the case technically. Uh, there was a change in attitude at Warner's when I returned, no question about it. Mm -hmm. and, and the first great present to me was William Wyler for Jezebel. That was and that was present. really <laughs> the beginning, you know, the real beginning. Yeah. Oh, yes, he is my God. He really is, uh, as a director. Yeah. The letter and little foxes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. I wish he'd find another before I die, but he'd better hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I spent uh, some time as a serviceman in California, and the greatest thing that ever happened to servicemen in California was the Hollywood Canteen, oh, and that was your baby, you. wasn't oh, it? Oh, thank you. Yes, it was a. It, it was an enormous job, but one of the most rewarding things I ever, you know, was part of. How I did enjoyed you? it happened to do... Well, because all the men, you know, were coming through, when all they, they wanted to see Hollywood players. And there was no way the studios couldn't take care of all of them. I mean, they're all coming through eventually more and more to the South Pacific, you know, from different phases of war. This gets so interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we've lost that. Uh, which we look better, with or without the light? <laughs> mm. What? Do you know how to light it? How does it light? <laughs> <laughs> the children of uh, actors like Paul Newman and Ryan O'Neill have been doing pictures with their parents. I remember B.D., your daughter, did a picture with you. She Didn't she care about it? She did kind of fun. It was just kind of something that would be fun for her to see when she, you know, grew up. It was just a little, little tiny, tiny, about one day's work. But she didn't care about acting. Right? She did another little bit in Jane with me. No, she had none of the feelings that, that this is something she must do mm -hmm. at all. And if you don't feel it's something you must do, you should never try it. Because um, you just have to have that much love of it, that's all, to wade through it, you know. Yeah. Uh, people once didn't talk about retarded children. Uh, even before the Kennedys, you were doing something about that. <coughs> I, well, I, have a I have a brain injured daughter. She's now 22. Uh, she'll probably never be more than five or six years old. She's beautiful. She's been at a marvelous, marvelous school since she was three years old. There's always some home Christmases and uh, summer holidays, and we go and see her and all this. But I was firmly convinced, and this was really long before there was as much knowledge of retardation as there is now, since the Kennedys have really, you know, helped us know about it. But I had a firm belief that it was unfair to my other two children to have this kind of a problem in the house. It, it could well spoil their entire lives, because the brain-injured children, uh, they take a lot of training. And also, you're not trained to train them. Margot's beautifully able to cope with herself now within her own limitations, and they teach them their own limitations. But this is an enormous date. Well, the other children couldn't have existed if you did this mm -hmm. with your child, you know. So that was that was what Gary's and my decision was that she go to school. Beautiful school. How do you live now on normal days when you're not doing a TV show or a picture? Or... Live in Connecticut, cook, iron, wash, <laughs> do what everybody does. <laughs> Are you a good cook? I remember one time when I spent a wonderful... I am pretty good, yes. You know, we, uh, I'm I... gradually getting better. I never had time to do much about cooking until about, oh, maybe 15 or so years ago, you know, because I was always working, but... Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. And, and I think it's a contribution to give friends a, a good meal. I, I, it's a creative thing to me. Well, I spent a wonderful weekend with you in Maine a few years ago, and we, we went and picked out our own lobsters, and then you went oh, back yes. and prepared. It was the yes. best meal I ever had. Well, the Maine lobster is hard to beat, but I can't <laughs> take credit for that. Because, you know, <laughs> you know there's, there's nothing to do but steam it a little bit. What? Uh, would 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 uh, would you stop uh, uh, now? Uh, I guess with the light and with the. Uh, not, well, well, I'm sorry. Uh, whatever whatever it is that that that's disturbing well, people. Right. <laughs> well, I I think at this point. I think at this point we ought to put the house lights up because uh, if people have questions, Miss Davis would be happy to answer them. And uh, if you would, wait until I call you and stand up and, and uh, be as loud and clear in your questions as you can. Would you turn on the house lights, please? And uh, I think at this point you can turn off that, that light so we can... See the audience. Does this yes, it does. Uh, like uh, this, Betty. They when they when all these singers <laughs> take it out on TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Could you turn this out now, please, sir? So we can see the we can't see the audience at this point. All right.
right. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman here. Sammy Davis and I, uh, we kind of dig each other. You know? <laughs> and so often if I'm in the audience and he's, you know, on, on the nightclub stage, he will say, my sister Betty is here. <laughs> and it's so great. It's so great. This gentleman, please. because I think he's one of the great actors we had. Always will think so. Yeah. Director? Director, no. Just a moment, please. Yes? I have lived on staircases. <laughs> You know, when I wrote my book, I honestly, seriously thought of calling it Up and Down the Stairs. I really did. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, they were just, it was just suitable to the script. Oh, no, no. It's, it's not very easy going up and down stairs. <laughs> you know, uh, I've shot, I shot Claude Rains on the staircase. I've died on staircases. I have, well, uh, I've been Fanny Skeffing and saying, oh, Fanny, you know, on the, on the staircase. No, it just so happened that um, 
Those scenes were written uh, for that purpose. The gentleman up here who was calling. All right. Uh, this gentleman, please, with the mustache. They never put it on television. They did one. No, you know, I think that's one of the, the best scripts written. I think I think it it was the, it was the best. Well, it was a very, very good story. <laughs> this gentleman? Oh, my God. <laughs> good. You, please? Thank you. <laughs> what about the balconies? Anybody want to... <laughs> Honestly, it was never planned. It, it, it was never planned. That's just the way I walked. You know, truthfully, uh, I, I never was conscious I had this at all. Naturally, after I saw a few films, I gathered that that's the way I walked. But it was never any... Those things are never planned. It's just part of maybe my zest for life. Who knows? Could have been that. George Sanders is out doubt one of the most brilliant men that ever walked the earth. But let me tell you something interesting about George. He was so very, very good, but he did not care about acting. He really was lazy about acting, which was too bad because he was a sensational performer to me. George Sanders? No. No, because uh, uh, the husband should be younger than Virginia. And uh, he's very British, very British. Uh, British in, in a way that um, Burton is not. Burton is sort of all countries, you know. Well, I don't really know. I never got far enough to get the part myself. <laughs> and I, 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 for instance, uh, I think Jimmy Stewart would have been marvelous as that man. And uh, Hank might have been very good. And... Uh, Beyond that, I never really... I just worried about me in it. <laughs> Gentlemen in the aisle? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> And I ain't again it, but it just is, there's no place for me in that movement. <laughs> Gentlemen over here. Oh, you are. Thank you very much. I love red. But my kitchen is orange. So if it's for the kitchen, orange. Beautiful. Orange and white. Uh, this Thank gentleman, you very uh, much. Thank you. White sweater. Yeah. I don't know. I made it with Warren William. And that was the uh, last film I made. It came out as Satan met a lady. That is right. Well, it, well, I didn't say a lonely life. I said the lonely life. And I think, I think that people in artistic professions have a good deal of loneliness as part of their lives. They're probably so peculiar we're lonely. 
No, my dear, never. <laughs> the point is, who would consider marrying me? <laughs> uh, the lady with uh, the orange dress? The gentleman here with the uh, white turtleneck. What? What? We can't uh, uh, do that right now. Please. Uh, uh, I can't. I'm sorry. The, the gentleman. Uh, the, the gentleman there. Yes, you. Yes. Next. You get out at three and four in the morning. This gentleman who's standing, the, the gentleman who's standing, please. Yes. This, this is Fanny Skeffington after she went sailing with her young lover, and that's what happened. That it really? Did you make that? You did? But you're not giving it to me. No, no. <laughs> it's uh, <off> <laughs> People in the balcony. Well, please, somebody in the balcony. We can't see the balcony too well, so give the balcony a couple of chances. Yes? Of acting schools? Well, the neighborhood playhouse I hear is a very good school. There are very few left. There are very few left. The neighborhood players I know about the most and, and have heard it's really quite marvelous. Well, I did that uh, at the request of Mr. Wallace uh, because it was not the most fascinating part I ever played, but the picture itself was something that should be made, and they felt I would help it at the box office if I was in it because they used practically all the stage cast. So I was kind of bait. very handsome from here. All right. The gentleman in the back, would you give him a chance to speak? Yes. Dramatic school. John Murray Anderson's. I went for a year. Oh, yes, and I was here four or five years. I started that my first professional part was at the old Provincetown Playhouse. And then I did a play called Broken Dishes on Broadway, then two or three other things, and then I went to California. Well, Donald Meek was a very, very fine actor on Broadway. I was in the play with him. And then I, worked, I did the tour of Ibsen with Miss Yerka. Yes. That's when I, when I played the wild duck with her, yes. Then I did uh, two other plays, and then I went to California. Yes. Oh, yes, Mr. Contero. Oh,
of the great directors, Mr. Jose Quintero. That was Mr. Well, Mr. Quintero, I don't really know how to thank you for that. Someday I'd love to find out. A moment! Will you please? Someday, we'll give you your chance in just a minute. Someday we must meet again. We met once, right? On 78th Street, right, right, and it didn't work out between us. <laughs> so someday we must talk. I'd be interested in, in what a, a, an actor could be, because I think directors teach us. Yes. Well, we must meet again one day. Find a part for me. God. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman here, please. certainly was Dark Victory. One certainly was Jezebel. Uh, one certainly was Voyager. Uh, in the later years, it certainly was all about Eve. And as I said before, I, I, I enjoyed doing Kate's Affair very much in the later years. And I adored doing Baby Jane. And, and that's, that's about really it. Of the real things that I thought I did well. You know, you don't often like yourself when you finish, you know. But these pictures I like. <laughs> what? What? He says, I'm waiting for you. What did he say? Yes, you can have your question now. What did he say? He says, I'm waiting. Okay, I, I, hold on just one minute, guys. She, well, she... She, um... She is my... Passion woman in all of history. And I, I, I really tried her the first time. I was only 30 years old, but I couldn't resist the temptation. And uh, I'd love another play about her someday or something. She's a heavenly, beautiful woman, I think. You know. Yes. I, I would not presume to answer that. I have to say to you, no comment. Beautiful woman, I think. You know. Yes. I, I would not presume to answer that. I have to say to you, no comment. <laughs> the lady here, the lady in the orange sweater, you. Oh, no. Uh, well, uh, a couple more questions. Two or Adore her and think, think. I think her heiress to each his own, her snake pit, was three of the greatest performances I ever saw. What? Well, maybe if I live to be 80 <laughs> and about 10 more people die, I'll write another one. Ladies and gentlemen, you... I was never offered Mildred Pierce. That was always Miss Crawford. No, oh, no, 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 no. Never. You, that was always Miss Crawford's role. Always. Next. Yes? Be quiet, please. Well, they just bleeped it. And uh, I never felt it was out of taste to say that in that particular circumstance. And in the way I said it, it was very matter-of-fact and wasn't making a big joke of it. And it, it really sort of made the end of the film. 
I will not tell you the words I used when I saw it bleeped. It's worse than that word. The gentleman up here in the balcony. The lady, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You mean in one of the tours with Olivia? A, a play? We were on stage. I was on stage for the tour of Jane. Yeah, that's right. What did I, did we, we do the doll thing? Yes. Well, that was a marvelous tour. That's the first time I'd ever done that kind of a tour. And it was, everybody was just so great to me. Well, I don't know yet. We just finished it. We just hope, hope, hope. What? Uh, it's, it's called Hello, Mother, Goodbye. And it's definitely a comedy. Well. <laughs> what did you say? I don't know. Uh, the gentleman up there with the glasses standing, please. Up in the balcony. Oh, yes, for 30 years I've wanted to play it. Nobody asked me to do it. They asked everybody else. <laughs> I might have done a play if it had been about her, I must say. Margot Channing? No, I wish I were more like her personally. I really mean that. I'm not as actressy as Margot was. I'm sort of just a housewife at home. No, truthfully. You truthfully. The lady up there that's standing. Did you finish? Wait a minute. Did you finish? I was pretty heartbroken myself. <laughs> Uh, please, if you, if you all talk at once, we can't hear you. We'll do a couple more in the balcony, a couple more down here, and then we're going to uh, finish. Well, thank you for the compliment. You have to ask John Springer, who has done this whole thing. I'd love to be doing it. No, I, 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 I. I enjoy very much talking to audiences, and I find that it's incredible the knowledge that uh, ev everyone has, particularly so many of the young people who are here tonight. It's just really thrilling to me. I mean that. This uh, gentleman over here, we've been neglecting. All right, one more up there. Oh, that was put in as a rib. That was not an ad put in for employment. It was a rib because uh, the bankers have lists, you know. And I was making Jane at that time. I was very, very gainfully employed. And uh, it was just a rib to give some of us a chance because how could we be box office without scripts? You know, so I did it in rather tongue-in-cheek about, you know, more affable than everything, you know. Put my picture in like a want ad, you know. <laughs> Gentlemen here with the uh, Aunt you. Why was that picture ever made? <laughs> no, the tragedy of that film was, because that's the last one I made for Warners, then I left, uh, was that Mr. Joseph Cotton, who's probably the most charming, lovely man in the whole world, what, what could she hate about him? Because it was a smashing book, Beyond the Forest. And uh, I, I, it was not for me to play. A girl like Virginia Mayo, a beautiful, marvelous girl like that should have played. I was much too old to play that part. But also, the husband of the book was a man like Eugene Paulette, a pig of a man. So then it did make some sense, you see. But not Cotton. Who would want to leave Joseph Cotton? He's adorable. 
The gentleman you. Of Arch Oblis. One of the most, I, I don't, I suppose it's somewhere. I don't know. I have a record of it. Yeah. Well, it's one of the most brilliant scripts. It was one of the toughest jobs I ever had. I certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I never really know. How do we do it? But a lot of people can do it, so I can't take, you know, great pride in it. I don't know. It's just something you feel. You know. The gentleman with the mustache and the glasses has been trying to get a kid. Yes, he has. Next. <laughs> Did you really feel that? Did you really feel that? The person up up here, the standing. That's the winner meeting. The dark. <laughs> I never did. Arthur Blake. Arthur Blake said that for me first. He caricatured me. I never said pizza in my life. <laughs> but I'm very grateful to him. He's kept me famous for years, pizza. Oh, Barbara Harrow is one of the greatest imitations of me that ever really was. You know, I could many. I just named three of Olivia's. But I have a very funny block when I'm asked to list things. I just can't think at the moment. I really mean that because I'm sure, for instance, Garbo and Camille, my God, you know. You know, marvelous performances have been on the screen. Uh, oh, so many. I can't really think of them. Yes, all right. Couldn't get it. Well, we could have gotten the little foxes, but we just knew there were an awful lot of great pictures that we couldn't have shown because there just wasn't time. good movie, actually. And, and Eddie Robinson was one of our finest actors. Definitely. This gentleman here, please. Uh, gentleman right holding your hand. It depends upon the script, and certainly uh, Paul and Claude and I had a wonderful time making this. We really did. It was not the perfect film. We never, the script, we didn't sort of ever work out right, but uh, parts of it I thought were interesting. Thank you. I want to ask for two more questions, please. Uh, this gentleman, this gentleman, you, yes, you who are standing. What? No, uh, no, no, nobody likes a bad review, but it's the privilege of the critic, and you have to grow up to learn to take it. That's their opinion, and sometimes you agree with the critic. You know, but we, it, it isn't fun, particularly if it's something you love doing and believe in, and you often get bad reviews for things you've loved doing. Very often. There's somebody right in the back. Uh, please, there's a, a lady who's been waiting in the back here. Would you please? Uh... Thank you. 
Huh? I'm sorry, we couldn't hear what you said. Well, you don't really. It, it becomes a sort of feeling. But I will quote Mr. Raines on this. Somebody asked him the same question, and he said, I learn the lines and pray to God. And that's really about what it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you.